Hi. A mouse joint. A mouse joint in box D. Yay, a mouse joint. This video, we're going to talk about a mouse joint. <laughs> now, I've said mouse joint like five times because really I have an essential question. What, what's the missing piece? What is a missing piece of the puzzle with box 2D? How do we interact with objects in the box 2D world? What if we want to click our mouse on that object and move it around? How do we do that? So if you just kind of found yourself wandering through the internet one day and you were wading through the box 2D documentation, you would figure out that you could actually say something like this, body.setTransform. And it has some arguments. It's a location and an angle. So you can always manually set, hey, I want this body to be over here, and I want it to be at this angle. And if you had the mouse location, you could say, set it at the mouse location, set it at the mouse location, set it at the mouse location. We do those all the time in processing. We say, rect mouse x comma mouse y. But let's think for a moment what that might mean in terms of a world of physics. What if I could say to this eraser, <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking to an eraser, but what if I could say to this eraser, set your location over here instantly? It's essentially teleportation. It would be right over here instantly. Now, of course, I had to move it continuously over here because this is the real world, a continuous time and space continuum place. We need, to, we need to live up to those real world principles in Box 2D. We cannot just, the, the physics will break if we start to teleport things around the screen. However, there is something we are allowed to do in Box 2D. We could say, hey, you know what I'd like to do to get this from here over there? I'm going to tie a little string to it and I'm going to tug it along and move it. So we can tie strings to our Box 2D objects and move them around. And that's what we're going to do with the mouse joint. The mouse joint is essentially a distance joint between a body, here is a body, Remember, a distance joint is between two bodies, but instead we're going to make that distance joint a joint between the body and the mouse. And as the mouse moves around, the body gets tugged around. I know that sounds a little strange, but it will make sense to you. But here's something kind of revolutionary. It's not revolutionary, but here's something that's really important in our thinking about this. Yes, we're calling it a mouse joint. Yes, we're demonstrating it with the mouse. But you should realize that the mouse is just an x and a y. So if you have some algorithm, some system, some set of rules by which you're setting x, y locations, you can move things around in the box 2D world according to that algorithm. And I would say, you know, when we get to the end of this video, an exercise would be don't use the mouse. Use like a Perlin noise random walk to tug something around the screen and see how that works. OK, so let's now, now that we've kind of covered why we want the mouse joint and how it works. And, and there's a, by the way, there's another solution to moving things around uh, manually in Box 2D, which, we'll, we'll, which I'll mention at the end of this video. The mouse joint isn't the only way. I want to go over how do we, how do we write the code. And again, we've got to follow these steps. First step is have two bodies ready to go. OK, wait. <laughs> I just erased that diagram that I want. Body connected to the mouse. Well, here's one body. Where's our second body? There's no body here. We're saying the mouse is a body. There's a new concept we're going to introduce here called the ground body. I know that's weird. It's a 2D world. Is there a ground? But you know, you can kind of think of it as basically what we're doing is we're at, if the wall is the screen and that is the body, we're sort of attaching it over here. And this ground body is going to get a target. And the target is the thing that's going to move around. So as the mouse moves around, we set a new target on the ground. And this uh, body actually gets pulled along with that mouse joint. <laughs> this bag is in the way. I'm going to trip over it. Hi. OK, so um, have two bodies ready to go. So now that we've established that, we have body one, the ground body. Everything else is essentially the same as a distance joint. We're going to call it a mouse joint definition, probably. <laughs> if I, we're going to look in the code to see the exact syntax. We're going to configure all the parameters. What is the maximum force? What is the damping ratio, the frequency hertz? The same kinds of spring-like parameters we had in the distance joint we're going to do, and then create the joint. But here is something a little bit different that we're going to see in this example. So now that we've established this set of steps and we kind of understand what the mouse joint is, what is something that's a little bit different, another thing in my way, um, what is something that's a little bit different in this example? In our main program, when we press the mouse, 
we want to create the joint. So you're going to see void mouse pressed. Here is where we're going to create the joint. And then in void mouse released, void mouse release, and I hope this is visible, we're going to destroy the joint. So this is kind of interesting about this program. Instead of having this kind of permanent joint that's always there, we didn't have to do this with distance joints. We just chose to do it that way in our example. We're going to do things, as soon as we click the mouse, boom, that joint's going to exist and we move it around. We let go of the mouse, boom, that joint is gone. This is going to allow us to do things like click the mouse, drag, release, and toss something across the screen as well. So there's a lot of possibilities here, but if when we look at the code, it's very important to, to understand how it's working with these events. Create the joint, destroy the joint. In draw, right, I wrote draw with an underline, but it's in void draw, we're always going to be setting the target. So as we move that mouse around, we're setting that new target so it gets tugged. Of course, we only want to set the target if the mouse is pressed because that's when the mouse has been created, but then we're going to have a logic. We're going to have a spring class. The spring class is going to manage the mouse joint definition. It will have functions to create the joint, destroy the joint, and set the target. So we're going to have a box class. That's the thing that's moving around. We're going to have a spring class to manage that mouse joint, and that spring is going to sometimes exist and sometimes not exist. It's going to be made and destroyed on the fly. So um, I think I've kind of talked through how this example works. Let's actually go and look at the code and run the example. It's going to be very exciting. <laughs> Press this button, and here I am. Okay, so first let's just run this example. And we can see, look, we have this box object. It's in, it's in a box 2D world, and it's sort of responding to gravity, and it's falling. Now, when I click the mouse on it, you can see I'm now able to tugging, I'm tugging it around. And you can see, actually, as I move the mouse, it. You can see there's a little joint there. It takes a moment, but it kind of catches up to me. Now, of course, I don't have to draw that line. I'm drawing that line just to demonstrate that that, that, that joint is there. But if I want to make it look more like I'm just moving it around the screen with the mouse, I don't have to draw that joint. So you can see this is me now moving this object around with the mouse, and I can toss it up. I can try to catch it. I don't know why I'm doing all this stuff in this video, but it's kind of addictive to play with, and I can't stop. Do it on your own time. <laughs> okay, so. Now, let's look at the code again. Remember, let's look at the main program. Here's what I was talking about. Mouse release, that's where we destroy the joint. Mouse pressed, if the box contains that location, so we're only creating the joint if we click on it. You know, this is a, you know, a choice that we're making, we, depending on what kind of interaction we want. But in this example, if we click on it, then bind the spring to the box. This is really interesting. Another scenario, whoa, here's an exercise for you. Try to create a scenario where we have multiple boxes and you can click on any one. How would you do this with a loop and an array to test which one are you clicking on, which one should that spring get bound to? But you can see this is how it's working. Destroy it when you release, make it when you click the mouse, and then draw. We always update the spring's location with the mouse location. So that's the general framework, right? Click the mouse, make the, make the joint. Release the mouse, wait, wait, no, no, let's start over again. Click the mouse, make the joint. Move the mouse around, tug it around, release, joint is destroyed. But this is all conceptually what we're doing. The actual Box2D code is deep within that, well, not deep, but it's in that spring class. So we can see these moments, right? These moments are uh, when we create the joint, right? That's binding it to that box. We make a mouse joint definition. Here's this crazy line of code, right? Body A is the ground body. That just, we're just attaching it to the screen, the ground. Body B is the actual box. So instead of a joint between two bodies, it is between two bodies, but instead of the two bodies the way we normally think of it, we have one body and then that ground. Then we set some parameters and we create that joint. Now, the update function, which is kind of key, is we say, ah, as long as the joint exists, set its target to the mouse location. So, and notice this function takes generic arguments x, y. We're passing in mouse x and mouse y, but we could update it according to, you know, anything, like a Perl and noise random walk. Hint, hint, exercise. <laughs> okay, um, so we can see all of the, these functions are contained within here. We're drawing the joint as a line. Destroy is very, very simple. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like lost here. Ah, destroy is very, very simple. There's a nice function in the Box2D world 
a class called destroy joint, pass it a reference to that mouse joint, and then set it equal to null. We want to set it equal to null because this is how we're always going to test. Is it active? If it's null, it's not active. If it's made, it is active. So anytime in our program we want to know is the joint on or off, we can just check if it's null. We could have used a Boolean variable to keep track of that, but keeping track of if an object is null or if it's created is also another way we can do that. OK, I think that's just about everything about the mouse joint. Aha! But let me mention something. So this is one technique. We're tugging something around the screen using a mouse joint. Another technique that you can use is to set an object's type. Ah. Set an object's type to kinematic. Remember we had a dynamic body, that's a body that moves around in response to physics. We had a static body, that's a body that never moves. And now we have a kinematic body. This is a body that you're allowed to control yourself manually. But you still don't set its location. The way you can control it is by assigning it a velocity. I don't know what I'm... By assigning it a velocity. So let's say this is the box, and you know this is where you want it to be on the screen. You could compute a vector which is uh, the difference between its current location and that location on the screen, and set that object's that velocity as that vector. So I'm not kind of going into the details of this. I personally like the sort of mouse joint technique. It, to move something around, it has a very kind of like real feel, and there's some limitations to the things that the kinematic body can do. I think it can't collide with other kinematic bodies or something like that. I should probably look that up. I will clarify somewhere, um, somehow, someday. Um, but, um, but this is one technique. And if you're looking into this technique, if I just go uh, quickly to the examples um, and go back here, uh, kinem I believe kinematic test. I Kinematic test in, in the GitHub repository, I guess I should work on this one, is one you could look at. <laughs> Let's run this and hope it works. You can see, ah, yeah, this is me moving it around. And you can see I'm able to move this around manually um, with the mouse. Uh, and it's very similar to, oh, and it fell. <laughs> because it's responding to gravity when I let go or it got bumped. OK, so, uh, so you can see that. I don't know what I'm doing here. I kind of lost my train of thought. But I wanted to just show you where, now uh, edit, edit, edit this, make this video better and shorter. Um, here it's where the body type is set to be kinematic. So that's something you could take a look at. OK, uh, so what I would suggest is a couple things. One. Try to have the box move around according to rules that's different than the mouse, using the mouse joint. Another thing, just add more stuff into the world. Can you do something where you're kind of moving something around to break things apart, um, knock things around? You can probably create some type of, you can start to thinking of how you might create a game if there's some form of interaction with keyboard or mouse affecting the, the behavior of one of the bodies. And by the way, in the next video, we're going to look at another way of affecting things manually by applying forces to the objects in Box City. All that time we spent figuring out how to make attraction forces, friction forces, and, a, and a p vectors and apply force function. We can do that with Box City also. So if you're excited about that, like I'm excited about that, that'll be in the next video. Great. This was recording was on, so I made this video. It was maybe uh, 12 minutes long, and I'm going to hit stop now.